Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, tonight on the Gauntlet, we are playing Chalice, which is a tale of Arthurian knights rooted in trophy. Uh, it's by Nicholas Masuk. Um, and um, I picked it up as part of the Racial Justice and Equality Bundle uh, during the summer. Um, so this is the, one that, the fourth game that I've played as part of that ongoing series with the Gauntlet. Uh, my name is Donna, my pronouns are he, him, uh, so I am running the game tonight. So let's get um, player and character intros in character keeper order, left to right. So I'm Bodhi, my pronouns are they, them, and I'm playing uh, Ulfric of Westmoreland, and whose arms are a snake in the jaws of a lion. And uh, Ulfric is was the character's major arcana is the tower which basically means that he's not sure that corrupted corruptible humans should be searching for the searching for the grail and whether they whether it's better left hidden so i'm going to say that ulfric was was charged by his father to seek the grail and he has personal misgivings about it Great stuff. Okay. All right. Hey, and I'm John. Uh, you see him pronouns, and I am playing Virgil Kinsley. Uh, Virgil um, comes from a family with a uh, sordid and disreputable history. Um, they were excommunicated when his great grandfather was uh, found practicing dark arts and was. Uh, uh, burned for that. Um, I am. Uh, I drew the the death major arcana. So that says that I am not long for the world. Um, I have a, a wound that is suffer that is festering and sapping uh, what little bit of life I have left out of me. Um, and the cup of the divine is my only source of salvation. So um, I picture Virgil as being on like a very like uh, you know selfish and uh, you know, out for himself. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, uh, at odds, it seems, with Sir Elian's lover, um, or love, uh, their, their, their family, and we'll see how that plays out. And hi, yeah, my name is David, I use he, him pronouns, um, and I am playing Sir Elian, um, Sir Elian has uh, his, his coat of arms is a silver unicorn over a blue field. Um, he's a skilled rider. Um, and the arcana I have is the uh, lover, um, or the lovers, I should say. Um, and um, uh, yeah, Sir Elian has taken up the quest um, for the grail um, in the belief that by retrieving it, they will prove their worth and their value to their lover. Um, they have indeed sworn to see uh, um, uh, Virgil dead. Um, uh, they they um, believe that they are distrustful in general um, and that they have done some great wrong um, to, to their lover or the kingdom in general. Um, and they are probably less than happy um, that, that they are on this quest with them. Okay, so yeah, I think, you know, you have all set out on your, your quest to find the Holy Grail together. And, you know, for the first few days, I think it is easy riding through friendly countryside. And I, th I think maybe it's, it's early spring. Uh, so um it's not quite kind of a, a glorious summer uh, things are still a little bit cold and a little bit damp but it's the best time to, to get going on a quest that could last some time um and you have been given some kind of uh, intelligence on where to to seek the grail um you are you are um beneath the maiden's tears and through the veil of the 
veil at the feet of the stone giant beyond the mossy Calvary to the green chapel where the cup that holds the blood of Jesus Christ resides forever. And so, uh, you know, you are leaving civilization in, in some uh, wild meadow uh, one morning. Um, a thin layer of moss has begun to coat your arms and armor. Um, you know, whether, whether you're wearing it or not, you know, everything that is nightly about your, uh, your retinue has, has begun to take on this strange green tint. Um, and, and how are, how are they, the, the knights getting on with each other when this, um, when this breakfast surprise um, reveals itself? Uh, let, let's hear from Sir Ulrich first. I um, don't think Sir Ulfric is a morning person, so I am grumpy, and I am, um, I, I think you see me, the camera, the camera pans round to, um, uh, to Ulfric scrubbing at his armour, um, complaining to no one in particular about the choice of campsite and that it's so damp that it's caused this whatever this this horrible scum is to grow to grow on everything and kind of just just yeah just kind of obviously intending it for the ears of his companions just just grumbling and complaining Uh, and what of uh, Sir Virgil? Uh, you know, he is probably observing uh, Ulfric more than anyone in in, in the group. Uh, what do you make of this outburst? Um, I think Virgil probably was first to wake up. Um, maybe trapped a squirrel or two, and has cooked it on a the remains of a fire. For, for a bit of a morning meal and put it onto the uh, back of a, a large leaf that I found and bring it over to Ulfric and hand it to him and say, uh, good luck scrubbing that shite off. Won't do much good. But here, eat something. Keep your strength up. I grunt wordlessly, and that is my only um, only expression of thanks. Yeah, don't don't have to be too accommodating. That's fine. And what of Sir Elian? Yeah, I think Sir Elian is likewise um, working some some. Uh, um, working a, a, a rough rag over his um, his armor, trying to to polish off the worst of this uh, mossy growth, um, as uh, he says, I I'm sure is hardly the worst hardship we shall have to face on this journey, but. <sighs> It really is most unsightly, um, and yeah, he continues just scrubbing away at this this uh, stain. So, I ra- no, go ahead. Sorry, I, I I raise my cleaning rag and kind of, kind of again. Again, a wordless grunt, but it's kind of an acknowledgement, an agreement this time. <laughs> <laughs> and so the, um, I think right about now, if we enter the first canticle, you should all draw uh, five cards out of the minor arcana deck for your hand. Um,
so you you find yourself um you know later on this morning after striking camp and you know the armor is not quite spick and span but you know you have fought back the the mossy incursion uh, a little bit um and you you find yourself overlooking this vast forest um which is somehow still a little bit um wreathed in mist uh, even though it, it should have burnt off long before um you can hear the roar of a river w within its boundaries uh, although from from this distance you really have no idea how far in it is um and as you as you journey through it you uh, you find this swift flowing river um which seems a little bit too strong to ford uh, unless you feel like risking your your horses uh, but eventually what happens is that it, it comes to a cliff and beyond the cliff you see a continuation of this vast forest but a roaring waterfall you know assails your senses um, and you can you can see through the mist you know a rainbow appear um for, from all of that sea uh, well not sea spray but this uh this cascading waterfall um how do you how do you take in this this site uh maybe let's start with virgil you know a, a great hunter might have ideas about what the uh what the wilderness might have to hold <coughs> Um, looking at this, this strong river, um, perhaps we can look to any, any natural crossings that the animals have found or created, a fallen tree or something probably is a better bet than us attempting to just power our way through it. Um, and how about Sir Ulfric? I think the the beauty of this waterfall has put me in a much better mood, and so I'm I'm very happy to go along with um, with Virgil's Virgil's suggestion. I'm um, I'm quite I'm quite buoyed up with this. I think that you can see that I'm more comfortable. I'm more comfortable out in the wilderness traveling than I am spending time with with other other people. Um, and for Sir Elian, um, you know, when you have a moment of peace, uh, are you are you able to like keep your concentration on the matter of at hand, or do your thoughts drift to to memories of your of your love? Oh yeah, no, absolutely. I think um, 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 as as um, uh, Sarelian sort of stares at the waterfall um, and and sort of hears the running water, um, he thinks back to um, uh, a time um, a few a few weeks ago when uh, they were sat, um, you know, by the uh, uh, by the edge of a fast flowing river, sharing. Um, uh, sharing sort of a picnic out in the um, uh, in the in the early spring um, in the early spring weather, um, uh, he is sort of braiding together a a, um, um, a, a, a sort of little um, uh, crown out of snowdrops, um, and um, it, it takes him a moment for him to sort of snap back to the present and um, and hear the more sort of tactical discussion going on. So yeah, I think maybe. Your, your fixation with the, the waterfall or the way across or, or your, your memories allows a, a party of, of highwaymen to, to surprise you. Um, and you know, they, they, they appear out of the, the woodland um, soundlessly, uh, arrows knocked and blades bared. Um, they're, their their gear is is all a bit um, drab, uh, and it looks like you know, they have obviously never bothered to to clear 
whatever moss grew over your armor. They, they have just left us fester and grow all over them. Um, but one thing that, you know, through the, the kind of muddy, dirty, grimy faces, you know, the, the, their bright eyes shine through um, and they move as if in unison. Uh, there's no even whispered communications, the odd hand gesture to, to move in a certain way. And they seem to be really um, uh, simpatico in terms of how they move. Um, their, their bows are only half drawn though. So it's not like they do um, appear um, ready to, to, to strike or to ambush you immediately. Uh, okay, so I've just drawn a card for the test. It is the Ten of Pentacles. Uh, so, um, you know, I think um, the yeah, I think you know some of you might might imagine that they are looking at your gear, looking at your horses. They are all on foot. Uh, with a slight uh, hint of envy. You know, they are obviously suspicious of you being interlopers into their forest, but you get a sense that they would like what you have or maybe even want you to join them. Um, their leader speaks out um, uh, and his accent is a little bit sibilant. Uh, you know, I don't know, it doesn't sound like 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 any of the the farmers you would have passed on the road here, but it still sounds as if it is local. Somehow you get that sense. Um, where are you going? He says. Uh, I think he is maybe directing his attention at um, uh, at Sir Elian, who is maybe not looking around or scouting, but but maybe sitting still on the, on his horse. We are just traveling through this place. We will not be staying long. But what do you seek? We seek a treasure beyond value. Is that worthless? No, quite the opposite, though also, I suppose, in some ways. Well, is it the, the green chapel you're seeking? Because if you would only let the moss overtake you, you would be there in no time. I see. So you have seen this chapel. Of course, of course. Who hasn't in these parts? You, you knights are so high and mighty. What would you do with this treasure? You'd probably keep it for yourselves. I, I would not keep it for myself, though I cannot speak for my companions. Mm. And I think he probably gives a pointed, uh, you know, side eye at, um, um, at Virgil. Uh -huh. uh, well, how do you respond to that slur on your character, Virgil? <clears throat> I, th I think I've locked eyes with uh, the leader of this other group and, and more or less ignore Sir Elian and, and just sort of give them a threatening glare and say, I'd lower your weapons if I were you. You'll find something you're not ready to deal with. Oh, well, we're, you're closer to death than I am, smells like. And somehow I'll still outlive you. Well, maybe me, but surely not all of my companions. You can only kill 
I was one at a time with a sword, after all. You'll be a pincushion before you get to the second. What about this guy? He, uh, he kind of glances at Sir Ulfric. I'd be afraid to take this one into the party in case he ate all of our winter store by spring. I think I just, um, I think I say, um, Sir, Sir Ellen speaks for me as well. I do not, I do not seek this treasure, this treasure for myself. I seek to guard it against those that would. Um, yeah, so I think, you know, you've been here for a while during this, this face off and the, the, the spray from the waterfall is starting to soak through. You know, you can feel your, your gambeson and all, all of your clothing start to get heavy uh, with, with that water. Um, and, and, and doubtless, you know, you'll have quite a bit of work to do on your, on your armor uh, to, to stop it from, from rusting. Um, but I think, you know, um, I think it's time probably to, to, um, to face up to the, the trial. Um, so, uh, so as before, uh, you have an option of um, playing your bid to overcome the challenge, uh, or any or all of you can attempt to, to steal the card I played by making a, a devil's bargain. Um, in that case, whatever card you, whoever bids the lowest card gets to actually steal it. Uh, so, um, I guess if, if anyone wants to steal it, let us know. And then otherwise you can all play a card from your hand in order to overcome the challenge. Um, so sorry, just, just remind me again, we're looking, is it we're looking to match suit and beat number, is that Yeah, is that so I, uh, ideally you match the suit and then you can match or exceed the number. So uh, for a 10, a 10 page knight, queen king will, will beat it. I am not sure if I am just lost. <laughs> I'm not sure how to read these cards. <laughs> okay. Uh, so on the minor arcana, uh, you, uh, the, the thing that it should become clear is that the picture of them will include the number of things in it. Now, if it's one, sometimes it's hard. They're just sticks usually. Um, but, uh, uh, and then the pentacles is the pentacle, obviously. Um, Swords uh, will be swords, and uh, cups will be big goblets. So, but the the number of them on the card will be the number. Um, gotcha. So look for look for some repeated item. Yeah, that's the number, and then look for the symbols for the suit. Okay. Yeah, I think this old-fashioned tarot deck is, um, I think, more modern forms usually include the writing at the bottom uh, to, to leave no doubt. But uh, yeah, sometimes it's a bit uh, awkward to see exactly what's going on. If you check in the chat, both both David and I were um, linking the Wikipedia page for this tarot deck and it shows all the cards with all the names. So okay, I find that useful. Okay, so... Okay, so that's how to read the cards, and we need to beat the Ten of Pentacles. Yeah, so, so actually, um, to, that is to succeed with flying colors, uh, is to match the suit and meet or exceed the difficulty. Uh, but if you do either of those two things, so if you either match the suit or uh, meet or exceed the difficulty, you also succeed, though in less... A splendid fashion. Uh, it's only a fail if you don't match the suit or meet the difficulty. Okay, okay, I see.
Okay, so you've all got your bids out. So if you click on the whole flip. Oh, I think I may have dragged the wrong one out. Oh, well, that's fine. We're going to go with it. Okay. Because <laughs> actually, I don't have a better one. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, um, so let's go uh, left to right, I guess, or worst to best. I don't know what's the better way to do it. Let's go worst to best. So if you're not matching uh, the SUS, uh, or the difficulty, I think that's um, John. Is that your card in the middle? The seven yeah, of cups or six of cups? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So that is um, the bid does not match suit, nor does it meet or exceed the difficulty you are found wanting in the current trial. The knight describes how they are very nearly vanquished and are spared only by the aid of another knight or by the mercy of a foe or by random chance. Um, I, I'm wondering, tell me what y'all think of this. If So, so we're, we're fighting these people, right? Is what this has come to? Um, well, that, that's up to you. Maybe you start something... Uh, by yourself, right? It's, uh, you know, th th I guess, overcoming the trial could be escaping them or fighting them or convincing okay. them of something. Uh, That's that, fair. Yeah. So I, I think I think Virgil does start a fight, and and perhaps he is outnumbered and um, is saved. I think it'd be interesting to be saved by Sir Elian, who will not let another person kill Virgil. <laughs> Does that sound to you, David? Yeah, no, I like that. I like that. Yeah. Uh, so, like, what what's the moment at which uh, you are sure you're going to die, Virgil, uh, and and then maybe David can take up how exactly uh, Sir Elian saves you? Um, I I think there's a moment where Virgil gets down from his horse and and draws his sword and you know marches forward only to find himself surrounded and, and it's, it's basically at the cusp of that moment of okay either they're gonna kill me or um this is happening and maybe that's when sir Elian steps in yeah and i think um um i think maybe uh, at that point yes yeah, Elian. um um rides rides up and um i think one of the uh one of the 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 sort of um one of these bandits is goes to kind of um uh, stab um uh virgil in the back and uh Sorellian sort of cuts them down from on top of his horse um and uh yeah it just says you if you move against us know that we are knights and we will not permit this um and uh yeah you know sort of flourishes his sword okay great um and Bodhi for for sir ulfric you match the suit but not the difficulty so you succeed in overcoming the current trial. Describe how, after a difficult struggle, you best long odds or draw from reserves of inner strength. So I think... Mm. So the situation as it stands is that um, Sir Elian has slain one of these these um, these bandits so we're not I don't see how we're getting out of here without a fight so I think I I think I draw my sword and and wade in and I think I am 
I'm trying to intimidate them and put them put them to flight. So I'm I'm kind of um, charging with my shield, bellowing, and and I think that the long the long odds and the reserves of strength. I think I do get struck with with several arrows, but none of them are are mortal mortal blows. Yeah, and I think you know. Um, you're, you're probably stuck with quite a few, so maybe you do resemble a, p- a pincushion, as was promised earlier. But you know, uh, the, the the male is good. You know, um, uh, even if you'll require a little bit of attention from from bruising or the odd uh, wound later on. Okay, mm-hmm. great. Um, and David, you've uh, matched the suit and met or exceeded the difficulty. Uh, you succeed at overcoming the current trial in a gallant and virtuous manner. Uh, you describe how you are instrumental in overcoming the current trial. Um, yeah, I think um, with the um, with him striking down this the the, the one bandit and the the um, um, and uh, um, Ulfric's sort of charge, um, I think um, uh, Elian sort of um, wheels around. Um, and says while it is a a noble thing to lay down one's life in protection of the grail I think that is hardly what you seek to do here know that we have nothing uh, upon us that is worth your lives as price so be gone from here and let us on our way um, and I think kind of um uh, the, the you know with that the um the brigands sort of um um uh, realize realize the situation they've got themselves in and um and yeah start to flee the battlefield okay great um so uh I guess we have um our first mark of sin upon our party uh for for Sir Virgil. Um, you can come up with a, a malady, so the, the kind of expression of that sin. Uh, there's, a, there's a list here. A couple of them work for me. So unless you have some, some good, good idea yourself, I can, I can pick one. That sounds good to me. I'll okay. Um, so I, there's one here which I think kind of fits with what we've done already in this scene. Uh, the knight's most treasured belongings begin to come spotted with uh, moss and verdigris, no matter how much they oil and polish it. And they regard the well-maintained outfit of their companions rapaciously. So, you know, not just the armor, but, you know, all of your kind of high quality equipment becomes, you know, green tinged and a little bit mossy despite your best efforts. Okay. Um, and David, how does the kind of mood now in the party change? Like how, you know, I think Sir Elian has like a natural authority right now after having, uh, obviously, <laughs> no matter how, might, how they might want to deny it, obviously won that fight. Um, you know, how, how does the mood change in the, in the party now after that fight? I think that there is a sense that we are on the right track. Um, you know, that, that kind of, um, you know, the, 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 they've spoken of the, of the Green Chapel. We're clearly on the right path. We have seen off our adversaries. So clearly we're doing something right. Um, yes, I think that's, that's kind of the, yeah, that, that, um, yeah, I was trying to think of a snappy word for it, but yeah. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, I kind of feel like we're on the right path. Okay. Um, so then I think the kind of most natural next step, as you were at the very start of that scene, is to try to descend this sheer cliff um, to the to the kind of forested valley below. Um, um, I don't think, like, the descent itself is um, is the trial, uh, but it is quite dangerous. You know, you have to maybe find a way for your horses to get down. 
the, the, the whatever rocky path you find is, is quite slippy and dangerous in that sense. Um, how, are, how are you approaching that, um, that challenge? Um, let's start with Ulfric. So I think I am, I am trusting my horse here. I am, I am, um, I think, I don't think I'm riding because I think that would, that would be too difficult for the horse. But I think I have, I have my hand on the kind of rear part of the horse's harness and the horse is leading me rather than me leading the horse. And kind of picking, picking our way carefully down, down this steep slope. Okay, cool. Um, how about Virgil? I, I think conversely, uh, where uh, Ulfric is, you know, a skilled rider and in tune with their animals, uh, Virgil is struggling to maintain control of his horse and is fighting it. Uh, I think the horse does not want to go down the cliff. And so it's a, a tiresome um, endeavor, constantly pulling and coercing the horse down, following the path that perhaps Ulfric is uh, guiding us on. Yeah, and I think there's like probably one moment of near panic where the, the horse just stops dead and, and, and nothing will get it to move. And then maybe, you know, uh, horses can walk backwards, especially war horses. It's part of their training, right? But, you know, you feel yourself nudged back, right? Um, or, or pulled back uh, as this horse has obviously decided that um, it doesn't want to continue. Uh, and maybe even starts... Uh, in this suicidal bid to turn around on the path. Uh, what, what do you do when this happens? Uh, I, I cursed the horse first off. Um, and I, I think I'm just gonna, gonna lean into pulling on the reins as hard as I can squatting down and, and pulling to course correct it and keep it from turning around and say damn you know this way so this is not like a courtly cursing you know with with veils and things that people understand but but not explicit this is a like a proper cursing you're giving this horse yep um how about uh sir elian are you out front or behind this a scene where, where Virgil is struggling with the horse. I think um, I think Elian is bringing up the rear, but I think he is um, still sat um, upon his horse. Um, he 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 trusts the horse. He is, you know, he trusts himself, uh, um, and the horse is, is, you know, despite being a kind of um, uh, war horse, it, it, it has that kind of almost the the agility of a um, um, of a sort of a pony as it picks its way down the side of the hillside, um, and um, I think probably as he gets closer to um, to Virgil, as um, uh, as, as um, uh, he's struggling, he, he will um, uh, just say, "Are you uh, having trouble there with your mount, good sir?" Is is this really a question? The answer is obvious, and I do not appreciate your mocking me. Either get your ass off your own and help me, or move on. Very well. I would hardly wish to do you further insult, um, and you know, he will give a little bow and continue riding down the hillside. More cursing under my breath. So... Um, yeah, I think, um, obviously, you know, I think Ulfric has, um, kind of a, a good relationship with his horse and, and Elian the same. Um, but do you feel like, 
Um, you can afford to leave Virgil behind in this manner. I mean, it's getting dark now and the, the, the trail is going to be quite dangerous if, if it is dark and, and he's still up there struggling with his horse. Um, I think I'm more concerned with... Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm more worried about um, Virgil's horse than, uh, <laughs> than Virgil himself. And I, I, I kind of... I, I walk back towards him and say, and say um, that your horse can can feel your frustration. Um, if you, um, how how do you expect how do you expect your horse to trust you when you don't trust your horse? And I'm kind of coaching how to how to calm a horse down kind of and maybe maybe actually kind of have a hand on um on Virgil's horse kind of calming it and speaking to it gently with um kind of forming quite a contrast between uh, from my bellows uh, in the fight earlier yeah i, I picture uh, Ulfric come up and, and, you know, put a hand to the horse's head and it, it calms and, he, and, and Virgil just gives you this frustrated, quizzical look and just, oh, whatever gets it down. If it, if it doesn't cooperate, it'll feel my boots soon. So if you've got some way of working with these beasts, then let's just get down this cliff and be done with it. I mutter, I mutter under my breath that I'm not, I'm not sure who is more the beast here. <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess you find yourselves down at the bottom of this cliff and, you know, the, the forest is, uh, whereas back up at the top, the, the forest was, you know, in some ways well maintained. Here it seems like it has never been cleared by, by human hands. There's uh, a lot of undergrowth, brambles and such. And then to your, to your other side, the, this great big pool, almost a lake that the waterfall fills is evident. Um, and kind of out of this green mist um, comes a little boat with a, with a, a lamp uh, coming out of it and a, a, a lone figure uh, rowing. Um, and you hear this faint um, song, almost like a, you don't recognize it, but it seems like it's a, a, a children, a nursery rhyme, uh, something that you can imagine uh, kids singing um, while playing, or maybe it's a very quirky, almost grim um, lullaby. Um, and you hear this, the soft splash of the oars, um, cease as as they stop rowing and then you see like a, a fishing rod cast out into the into the lake um it's it's getting quite dark now you can kind of see the sunset in the distance um or at least you can see the red glow of light uh reaching through the forest uh what what do you do Uh, how about Sir Elian first? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think um, Sir Elian is going to sort of pull his horse up uh, to a stop and kind of look um, look towards the uh, um, the uh, the light. Uh, how about uh, Sir Virgil? Uh, I think we we see Virgil reach reach the bottom with the horse finally. Um, see Sir Elian stopped and he'll he'll ask him. So uh, finally finally done with that. Is this where we're making camp? Uh, 
it seems it seems a good enough place certainly though i suppose this is your area of expertise is it not I've more experience with the hunting and killing portion, but I've got a, some knowledge and this looks suitable to me for a place to lie our head. Maybe that fisherman has some fish he can trade us for a good dinner. Indeed. Perhaps, uh, perhaps you're right. So I think as soon as you mention uh, him, uh, a voice calls out, um, not in some kind of loud um, exhortation, but like a, oh, you're here. Um, uh, almost, almost sorry that uh, he finally has company. Uh, are you here already? Uh, I've only caught a couple of fish. If you want some, I can trade for it. Have you got anything worthy over there? We have some things worth trade, but what do you mean we're here already? Were you expecting us? Oh, there's always bloody knights coming along. I don't know why you bother. Well, then you're certainly well-versed in preparing for us. Yes, we'll trade for fish. I mean, I would get out of those silver scales if I were you. You won't be able to get your way through this forest or this lake with that on. I'll trade you one set of scales for another. Who's the king now? Is he a fisherman? I think I'll look to my companions and say, what, what's, what's this man on about? Fisherman for a king? He certainly seems quite addled, but it might be worth our time to find out what he knows, I suppose. So the... Um... The old fisherman, you know, pull, pulls the boat up onto the shore through the reeds, you know, soaked to his waist in this mossy uh, water. Um, and he approaches your, your, your camp with a couple of, um, with a couple of trout uh, in, in his hand. Um, and he holds them up. Uh, you know, his, his fingers are uh, into their gills so he can hold them without them slipping. He says, two fine fish. Uh, fresh, you, well, you saw me ca catch them. So, uh, I mean, we're all hunting something, aren't we? But why don't you trade in whatever you're hunting for something uh, sure, something that will fill your belly? Something that won't kill you. Not like the, the previous fellows, they wouldn't take any advice. No, they were so sure of themselves. Do, um, do you have any advice to give, old man, that is not in riddles? You mean riddles? I don't speak in riddles. Um, there's fish here. They'll feed you for the night. Always good to travel on a on a full belly. People people um, say these uh, fish are the are will make you brainy, smart. Not not the kind of wisdom you'd get from deer or whatever it is you eat now, in that fine castle of yours. No, real wisdom, hard-won wisdom. Now, no riddles here. 
no riddles here at all. Why don't you come and sit with us for a bit? We'll start a fire, cook these fish, we can share some drink, and perhaps you can tell us about these other knights that came before us and why you believe that they were uh, so ill-fated in the forest. So he, he sits down and he cooked the fish and he starts to tell a story of um, a, a long lost uh, knight. I think maybe it could be um, Sir Elian's loves like an older brother or a, a, an uncle or something who went missing on a grail quest years before. Um, uh, do you want to give give that nice a name, David? Yeah, um, I think it was um, um, Sir Wolfram, um, who um, yeah was was um, uh, their their uncle. And um, set out in search of the Grail uh, um, to um, I think they set out in search of the Grail to um, um, what was the thing I was looking for? I think almost like as a um, as a penance for a wrong they had committed. Uh, what was his name? Oh, Sir Wolfram. He was a proud man, uh, a fierce knight. Uh, he was he was hiding things too. I knew he wouldn't share his shame with me. I think it's always best to get your shame out in the open. I mean, when you die. You won't have your sins known. They'll be known anyway. But he didn't take my advice. He went straight into that forest where you're going to now. He wanted to find the grail when I told him it was not for him. If you take my advice, you turn around and go home and say you couldn't find it. There's no shame in failure. I don't believe that's an option for all of us. Well, there's worse things than death. And you say you don't speak in riddles. Well, that's the plainest thing I've spoken all night. So, um, think maybe there there's probably um you're a, a bit more interrogation but i don't i'm not sure you're getting much more much more out of them um and then in the morning you must um go into the woods r right where he has kind of told you not to go right um you're in there the undergrowth is worse than anything you have previously seen. You know, it's it's almost like the the roots are purposefully tripping you up. The the brambles catching your mail, drag you. Um, uh, you know, anything that can get in your way does get in your way, and you must kind of force your way through the undergrowth. Maybe even uh, drawing a sword to cut your way through. Uh, so. I have drawn a Queen of Cups, which is pretty, pretty high. Um, so you the again the option of of doing a deal with the devil to to take it or to to play a card as normal against it. Uh, but if you're if you if anyone wants to to do a deal with the devil first, uh, do it now before anyone else plays a card. I think I'd like to do a deal with the devil. And I think that fictionally, I don't want to draw my sword to 
hack away the undergrowth because then I'll have to kill something that I don't want to. So um, I am going to do a deal with the devil and let's just see what. So is, and I'll bid that against okay. it. Anyone else want to do something similar? No? Uh, how about you, John? Okay, cool. So you take the Queen of Cups into your hand, buddy, and I will draw a new card for the challenge. Okay, that one's fairly straightforward, right? The, uh, the Ace of Pentacles, so devilishly easy to, um, to surmount. I mean, in fact, you cannot fail against this. You can't have a card lower than an Ace. Um, so why don't you uh, make your bid and I put my card that I bid against yeah. the original one up here. Yeah. Cool. Okay. I will. Technically, it goes into the deck, but. I, I guess it's at the bottom of the deck. It'll, you'll never see it. Yeah. Cool. So uh, why don't you reveal your bits and let's do the um, the resolution for this scene, and then we'll take a break. So we have uh, the four of cups. The six of wands and the six of pentacles so let's start with the four of cups so you've uh, exceeded the difficulty but not the suit so you succeed but only just describe how you're forced to use unorthodox means rely on luck or chance or even employ dishonorable tactics to attain victory just getting through the the, the veil um so i guess that's you david yeah so um yeah i think i think we kind of see um sarah Elian by this point has had to dismount his horse um and is pushing his way through the undergrowth the sort of um um you know uh briars are kind of swinging back and and and, and crashing uh, you know scraping against him you see a couple of like small cuts open up on his face um um you know where where sort of he's caught by these 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 briars and stuff and he he sort of gets gets through but it's clear that he is very much out of his element here this is not um uh this is not something he is um he's used to doing this is not something he's comfortable doing um, and i think that's quite uh, quite apparent to everybody uh and john you've got the same uh with your six of wands uh so yeah why don't you describe yeah. how you overcome so uh virgil pushing through this this undergrowth and, and cutting away at things but He's got all of this green scum and moss growing on him. And so I think he's slipping as he tries to move through and, and maybe even at times is, is now having trouble holding on to his sword. It's, uh, it's hard to grasp things. And so it's a, he, he manages, but it's a, it's a struggle the whole way. And he's exhausted, I think, by the end of it. Okay, great. And Bodhi, you overcome um, in a gallant and virtuous manner with, with the devil's aid. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that it's my strength that aids me here. And also the fact that I have, I'm lucky enough to have some, some stout leather gauntlets. So you see me, you see me striding through the forest almost kind of uprooting small trees to kind of clear my path um uh and yeah i don't i my my size and strength lets me 
bypass what the others are having difficulty with without too much trouble at all. It's it it kind of it it falls beneath beneath my hands. And when you kind of win through to the the end of this terrible section of the forest, you know, I, I guess at some point in time, it must be the case that you are you are beating the trail then, and they are mm-hmm. you, in in your slipstream or in your wake. Um, yes, I think so. But I think that that because I'm I'm pushing stuff away i think that i'm not i'm not necessarily beating the trail cleanly and i don't realize this which is why the others are still having having difficulty okay yeah um and and how is the mood then in the uh, in the camp when you when you break for the for the night um you know you are I mean, maybe not completely <laughs> fine, but um, uh, but the the others are definitely worse for wear. I think I'd like to see what my sin or malady is for okay. that devil's yeah. devil's bargain. Yeah, let me uh, let me check the list for something good. Um, so. I mean, I, I like this last one, uh, but let me know what you think. The knight's heart swells with self-righteousness of the green mark of God upon them and scorn at their companions' lack of faith. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going for that. Okay, cool. Um, where, do, where do I find... Uh, so you can just paste that into the section... Uh, in in the sins and maladies, um, unless you want you want me to do it, I just don't know where the sins and maladies are in where where we're finding the list. Oh yeah, it's not in the character keeper actually. So uh, let me paste it in from the PDF. Sure. See that now. Stick. Okay. So I think as as we're making camp, I I'm scornful of kind of not overtly but I'm kind of just making slight digs at the at the other's covetousness of of the grail I'm I'm like I I don't even want the grail I'm kind of I, I I'm I'm bigging up my purity of kind of being on this quest as a matter of duty, not as a kind of matter of of wishing to wishing to have the grail for myself, and um, and kind of bemoaning the. I, I I think maybe I'm I'm not attacking them directly. I'm bemoaning the kind of grail quests of old and how they're always corrupted by by kind of individuals seeking the grail for their own ends but i think it's clear what i'm getting at great yeah um so i think we can take a break there uh we say 10 minutes if that's all right so back at five two okay cool okay we're back um canticle three the stone giant so um so i think this knight um never really lifts you know the the dawn comes and you're sure you can hear uh the the dawn chorus 
and you do see the light lift a little bit, but it's like you're so deep in this forest that you know it's not really reaching you. Um, and you know, in this very uh, dark forest, you're you you have to search for for the feet of the stone giant. Um, the place is you know full with this. Um, or starts to fill with this unnatural fog um, that seems to increase as the day goes, then, then burn off. Uh, and, uh, and in that light um, and in that fog, the trees, the branches seem to twist uh, towards you. Um, and in fact, the, the trees themselves appear to, to like try to steer you in a certain direction. Um, how, I think, how does Sir Ulfric react to this um, bizarre landscape? I'm, just never really woke up properly because the dawn never came so I'm kind of I'm just not really conscious of it but I guess I'm following where these these moving branches are are directing me I'm kind of I'm not I'm not imposing my will like I was yesterday, I'm having the will of the forest imposed on me. Um, yeah, and I think, you know, the, I mean, the place isn't noisy, but you know, the, whenever the, these trees seem to shift in this, um, in this kind of new environment, you know, the, everything creaks, um, and you know, sometimes you do feel like they're screaming at you, you know, as if they know that you are going the wrong way. Um, how about uh, Virgil? Um, as we're traveling along, I think I think today Virgil looks, you know, worse than he did the day before. He's, he's, he's had a cough, but it's, it's heavier now. There's a, there's a, a deep, like a gurgle to it. And at times you can see him coughing into a cloth that he quickly tucks back away. And after we've been traveling through these woods for a while, he'll say to the group, these, these woods are not natural. I fear that the devil himself is standing in our way blocking us on our quest. This is not right. And what of Sir Elian? Um, yeah, Sir Elian um, will kind of... So we are certainly being tested, though whether it is by the devil or something else, I cannot say. But everything we have seen so far has led us down this route. And we should expect obstacles in our path. So perhaps we are heading in the right direction. Um. In, in this strange forest. Well so, spoken, so well, yeah. Sorry. Um, in this strange forest, um, like what bizarre thing makes you, you think of your, your lover, uh, Sir Elian, uh, and maybe the things that are keeping you apart? Have I frozen? 
Yeah, sorry, yeah, you, you, you broke up a bit there. I, okay. I caught part of what you said, but not all. Yeah. So in, in the strange forest, what, what thing brings to mind uh, your, your love and maybe the reasons that you cannot be together? Yeah, so I think um, um, I think there are some um, um, wild roses sort of growing um, off to the side of, of this very vague path we're going down, um, and the, the the roses have sort of bright um, uh, bright blooms, perhaps a little early for the season, but. Um, you know, and they're sort of like, you know, um, perfectly formed, beautiful roses, but they're, they're surrounded by thick um, thickets of, of, of um, thorns uh, around them. Um, and for, for Virgil, um, so something, some kind of symbol maybe carved in by a previous uh, questing knight reminds you of your, your family's sins uh what what does it what the symbol is it and what does it bring to mind um i think i think it's it's um a symbol that resembles a, a ram's head and it brings to mind the uh, the dark religious and practices that my great grandfather was involved with, um, with you know, which I think was squarely against the church. And and I think when I see it, I just start thinking. Lord, am I am I so forsaken that you must remind me of the dark deeds of my family? Is there no hope? Uh, and how how of Sir Ulfric? Um, uh, what what here makes you think that maybe this forest could be a truer companion to you than these other knights who who are with you? Sorry, can you repeat that? You broke up a little bit Sorry. there. Um, you're back now, I think. Yeah. Um, what about this this forest makes you you feel like um, it would be a better companion to you than these other knights? I think that. It's the way that it's the way that it's steering me. It's whenever I try and follow a path that is being the, the direction that either um, Virgil or Salian is going, I kind of come up against things that trip me or that um or or i get kind of branches i have to duck low under whereas when i i follow where the forest leads me i find little sections of deer path and and it's a lot easier it's kind of i feel it's a much more comfortable journey when I give in to where the forest seems to want me to go. Uh, and I think, I wonder if, if Virgil notices this, you know, you are paying close attention to Ulfric when you can, but do you see something in him that makes, um, that makes you realize that he would think of striking out by himself. Yeah, I, I think I noticed that he just, he, he, 
he seems to most easily navigate these uh, heavy wooded areas, both from yesterday and today. And so um, I, I will, you know, occasionally remind him that he is honor bound to stay with us as part of this quest. To abandon us would uh, surely forsake him for uh, the rest of his life. I think whenever you do that, I answer with a cow. <laughs> and nothing more. Um, and what of what of Sir Elian is? Um, are you uh, noticing this bickering throughout the day, or is it? Um, are you in fact making more progress all by yourself than with your companions? Um, I think that um, uh, Sir Elian is um, uh, putting up with the uh, the bickering with good grace. Is is how he would see it. Um, as, um, and he he is going to continue, uh, uh, you know, working working with his companions as they make their way through. But um, yeah, I think I think is is kind of um, try, trying his best to rise above the bickering, but but probably you know jumping in occasionally. Um, and I, I think you know there's there's a moment when you look behind you. And I think Virgil's gear is, you know, quite, you know, tinged with with moss, right, and verdigris. And I think uh, for, for a split second, to Sir Elian's eyes, Virgil has disappeared, right? He is so well camouflaged against the forest that um, that you're sure he has left you, uh, abandoned you, just as he was accusing Ulfric of. Uh, what, what's your reaction to this? Yeah, I think Elian um, will um, uh, will be be shocked by this, and um, will kind of look around and 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 um, you know be 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 searching, uh, you know, look, looking for signs of where they've gone. Um, um, and is, and it is clearly kind of yeah, so you know, slightly confused, agitated by this. Um, so does 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 Virgil like snap into their vision once more, or does Sir Ulfric wonder, you know, what the hell this pair are up to? Maybe they are worth leaving behind after all. They they seem to be losing it. Yeah, I, I, I think I, I think I kind of snap at, uh, snap at the others to stop, stop lolly gagging and, um, and uh, that we need to, we need to make progress. And I'm, I'm, I'm frustrated with how difficult. I'm frustrated with how difficult this journey is for the others and I'm wondering to myself um, <laughs> as part of the kind of, because of my sin I'm wondering wondering to myself um, whether whether they're finding it hard because they are unworthy compared to myself I fail to notice the irony there Good. and then yeah. you see virgil i think no oh, go sorry go ahead john i was gonna say you see virgil who, who had disappeared and due to his uh unintentional camouflage uh get up from the ground where he's been slumped over sitting against a tree and and he's he's so pale that he blends with the bark and he's got moss growing in his beard and, and such and he coughs and, and a, a hefty wad of phlegm flies out into the woods. He, he says, I, forgive me, companions. I 
am not the man I once was, but I will see this through or I will die. So for, for Sir Elian then, when, when uh, Virgil appears again, uh, almost miraculously, let us stay together until that becomes the case. Uh, Sir Ulfric, I mean, I think your thoughts were leading in that direction anyway, but how, how do you think you might win the grail on your own uh, if you were to leave your companions behind? I, I'm becoming increasingly convinced that I am being guided by an unseen hand towards the grail. So I would trust, I would trust in that guidance. I don't think, I think that, I think that my sense, my waning sense of honour have holds me back from that path as yet but i'm i'm kind of in my heart of hearts i'm convinced that if i if i just trusted to the guidance of whatever is pulling me onwards that it would lead me on the true path um and virgil uh i think you know that ram's head sigil that you saw or maybe imagined you saw earlier is an obvious uh, sign that you are meant to be here um do you, do you think you can make it by yourself uh, or, or do you need these people to support you in your illness a while longer I I think that I still need the others. Um, it is it is I'm beginning to to think that my uh, death sentence is punishment for my family's past, and that uh, where my family previously. Um, it was prideful and tried to do things on their own. I have to overcome that, and we'll we'll we'll, we'll have to convince others to take me the way that that I can't do it on my own. Okay, um, I think David, you've already kind of answered that question for for Sir Elian anyway by being on the straight and narrow, right? Uh, so let's let's go to the trial. Uh, I've drawn a five of swords. So if no one wants to uh, do a deal with the devil to steal that, then play your bid. Okay, I think we've got everyone's bids on the table. Let's flip them. Okay, so uh, we have the quite a lot of swords. <laughs> so many I can't count. Was that 10? Uh, no, nine of swords. We have the eight of swords and we have the three of wands. So, the three of wands neither matches the suit nor exceeds the difficulty. So that is, you are found wanting in your current trial. You describe how you are very nearly va vanquished 
and spared only by the aid of another knight or by the mercy of a foe or by random chance. You have dishonored yourself. So yeah, this seems like quite a, quite a turnaround from your, your utter confidence, uh, Sir Ulfric. Uh, what, what happens? So I think I do trust the forest to guide me and I think I'm I'm increasingly going along with whatever whatever way it's leading me and it leads me astray I'm I find myself I turn around and without intending to I'm not intending to abandon abandon my fellow knights but, but I find my as I try to retrace my steps I find myself descending into a mire I'm kind of I am every every direction I take whether I go even if I turn backwards and retrace the steps I've just taken the bog is deeper and I I feel myself sinking first up to my calves, then up to my knees, then then my thighs, and I I I feel that I am surely to drown when a a hand thrusts itself at me from from the uh, from the limb of a tree and I and I grab at it um, as a drowning man would cool okay so for for the other two you're both matching the suit and exceeding the difficulty so you're both overcoming the current trial in the gallant and virtuous manner um, I guess so. So maybe take in turns, um, maybe Virgil first and then uh, Elian, uh, you know, how you maybe rescue uh, Ulfric and then find your way through to, to find the, uh, the stone giant. Uh, so go with, uh, go with the first John, maybe. Yeah, I think Virgil, um, as he's marching through the, the woods begins reciting the Lord's prayer and, and just over and over. And whether, whether real or, or he imagines it, it, it reinvigorates him. And he, he finds himself able to breathe a little easier, march a little stronger, keep his pace up. Cool. Okay. And um, David? Yeah, and I think kind of a, a, a look of determination comes over Sir Elian as he, he's sort of proceeding along and um, that sort of, yeah, concentration, determination um, as he sort of pushes forwards. And yeah, I think maybe he does kind of spot um, kind of um, Ulfric's, um, uh what's the word I'm looking for? Distraction, I suppose. And, and you know, kind of helps, helps guide him back towards the path. Um, I think I've got a good malady for, for you, Bodhi, on, for Ulfric. Um, the buzzing of flies and the scent of decay is in the knight's head, filling them with the need to send themselves and the others into the dirt. You know, the, the stench of that mire has just infused you and you know, um, and that's kind of where where everyone belongs now in, in that mire, in in the dirt, right? Consumed by the forest. Okay, uh, so yeah, I think you know you you find yourselves um, at these um, you know gigantic feet uh, um, of this stone giant. Um, you know, these, um, you know, strange, um, 
um, strange, I mean, there must be natural rock formations that just resemble uh, a, a giant, but they are obviously far too large to be uh, actual carvings, uh, or, or maybe not. Um, and and you find yourself, it's a little bit strange, like you find yourself back in uh, a narrow veil, um, still wooded, but not quite as heavy as the one you've just escaped from. Uh, and the air is misty again, just like as it was with the waterfall. Uh, everything though is um, lush uh, and wet and you know there's no kind of bare stone or even bare bark. Everything is covered in, in really thick uh, moss. Uh, directly ahead you see a stone path leading up towards a small chapel. Um, and, and again, all of that stone is really covered in this slimy mold. It's quite slippery. Um, um, and, you know, you know, everything is this strange, bright, verdant green. Um, so, yeah, how, how do you approach this chapel? Uh, let's, maybe let's start with uh, Virgil. Companions, I think we are, are nearing our, our goal. I think we need to anoint ourselves before we enter this hollow ground. This is a holy quest we're on. We must treat it with proper reverence. Uh, Sir Elian. So, oh, do you want to say something else, John? I was just going to say, Virgil. I'll start pulling out. Um, I, I imagine a, a, a Arthurian knight would carry, you know, some some maybe a bottle of holy water and some some incense or something to, to do some sort of basic prayer ritual. So I'll start pulling out the. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think um, Sir Elian uh, will um, pull out um, uh, pull out a crucifix from around his uh, neck and kind of um, you know um, um, kiss it and murmur a prayer. But there is also this yeah hawk feather um, hanging off the the um, cord that the uh, crucifix is attached to. Um, and you know his his fingers maybe linger over that for a moment as well as he uh, as he puts it back under his uh, uh, under his shirt. I I think I attempt to do much the same as John is doing. I, I attempt to to purify myself with holy oil, but. Wherever it touches my fingers, it's it seems to absorb the dirt of the dirt of the of the forest and the mire, and just becomes thick and black. And and wherever I I try to make the sign of the cross, it it leaves me wherever kind of dirtier than I was before, and I'm left kind of attempting to scrape this this formerly holy oil off off my fingers kind of the thoughts of the ritual abandoned just with the disgust of this this thick grimy substance this has turned into yeah and when you when you come up towards the the chapel you know you see a discarded Kind of paraphernalia of knights, so breastplates and helms and swords and maybe uh, little uh, tincture bottles of holy oil uh, or or holy water as well, just just scattered, all covered in in moss, but obviously identifiable in their form. Um, and and 
once you get into a certain distance from the chapel, you know, everything has gone very quiet. So the, the normal chatter of birds and insects completely dies away and you're left, um, it seems, you know, absolutely alone uh, at the doorway. Um, and I think, you know, may, maybe, uh, maybe Ulfric doesn't smell it because his, um, his senses are so full of that decay anyway, but the, the two others smell this strange, um, you know, uh, s strange smell of, of uh, dank water or deep earth, this terrible stench of decay wafting from the chapel uh, and out steps this, this knight, um, you know, a, a massive figure in, in armor, uh, but it's again like the the stones on the way up here and the stone walls of the chapel, completely covered in green mold, uh, and it bears a uh, an axe, the sort you would, I guess, an executioner's axe. Um, and it just is is there in the doorway, you know, uh, completely filling it, um, impossibly enough. But uh, there you have it. Um, and it, it points at you uh, and, and tells you to be gone in this strange, booming, kind of cracky voice. Um, you do not belong here. You must abandon your quest. All of your dreams are dirt. All, all but one at least. Uh, and I think he points at uh, Sir Elian uh, and says, all but one of your dreams, if you return now, if you turn away now, you can still win your love. If I allowed myself to be turned from my goal by your words, I would hardly be worthy of the of the of what I have uh, set out to do. I will not break my oath so easily. then I will break it for you. Uh, and I think he turns to Sir Virgil and says, your family cannot step foot inside this hallowed place. How can you lie to yourself and to the others by pretending to be worthy of what is inside? Nothing can save you except that you will infect the grail with your hatred and your blasphemy. It is true. I am not worthy to step inside and I am not worthy of the grail, but perhaps my death will serve the penance and right the wrongs of my family's past. That is between my family and the Lord. You will not stand in the way. Well, I will gladly exact that penance, even though it cannot be enough. And then I think he points at Sir Ulfric. Surely not you. You are as foul and as fetid as any who have fallen here before. Maybe you can take my place when I am gone, but you will never step inside. I, I had feared to seek the grail because because I thought that 
because I feared to bring it into the corruption of the mortal world. But looking around and raising the corrupted oil still clinging to my fingers, where is more corrupt than here? I, I, I do not believe you when you talk of purity. Where is, where is your purity? I have, I have come to, to rescue the grail from this corrupt place. And I think at that, this knight just laughs, this strange echoing laughter, you know, fills your ears and reverberates in the, in the, in the valley. Um, and it, you know, swings its axe in a, I, I guess, a, a little flourish, as if to say the talk has, has, has ceased. Uh, now is the time for the reaping. Uh, so uh, I drew the uh, King of Swords. Um, so uh, if anyone wants to take on any more sin with a deal with the devil to steal it, you can you can bid for that, or uh, otherwise you can bid to overcome the challenge. I think I'll bid for that. Okay. Uh, anyone else going to I steal I... that? David, John, you want to join in? Go on, I will as well. <laughs> uh, how about you, John? I'll, no? I'll, okay. I'll leave this between them. Okay, so you're both going to bid secretly uh, the card you're going to exchange for the King of Swords. And when you're ready, uh, which it looks like you both have cards out. Yeah. Um, the lowest card will win that bid. Um, so flip them when you're ready. So is it the Five of Cups, David? Uh, and the Seven of seven. Wands. Okay. So uh, you, uh, you get the King of Swords, David? into your hand and uh, I'll take the uh, five of cups uh, and now I do will... I keep the seven of wands because yes you keep it because you have it. You're, you're not paying us okay you didn't really... yeah yeah that's a, yeah I mean, as I understand it at least uh, so now I'll draw a new card for the uh, oh right. a lot of royalty uh, who is that that is the king of cups uh, all kings, all the time. <laughs> so, um, out of the frying pan into the fire in terms of the difficulty. So, if everyone wants to bid to overcome that challenge. Okay, and reveal. I'm shocked to see you play the, the, the King of Swords. <laughs> <laughs> shocked, I tell you. Um, so we have the Page of, or the Knight, maybe? The Knight of Cups, yeah. And the Queen of Cups. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, no, no, one's, no one's failing abjectly in this one, despite the, the high card. Uh, so when you match the suit, but not the difficulty, you succeed in the current trial. The knight describes how after a difficult struggle, they best long odds or draw from reserves of inner strength. So um, let's go with, um, let's go with Ulfric first and then uh, Virgil. So, I'm I'm drawing my sword against this axe and I think it's clear that most most knights would not 
be able to hold off blows against an axe like this with a sword, but I'm I'm just holding. Kind of, when I parry, I have to have to use both hands, one kind of, kind of half, half swording and and um uh hold and holding up against it and you can see maybe the ground's a little soft and you can you can see me sink into the ground whenever I whenever I receive a blow from from this axe but I I eventually I'd say I make it I make it past the um the guardian the guardian knight but um I perhaps wound it wound it on my way past but don't um don't don't kill it outright and so I'm I'm caught in caught in bloodlust and looking looking round for some creature to 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 slay as the terrible price of of drawing drawing my sword and that's where where you leave where the camera pans. Great, and uh, John. <clears throat> I think for Virgil, also engages in, in fighting and, and is initially beaten back. He's too weak to even attempt to weather these blows. Um, but then you hear him again starting to repeat the Lord's Prayer and, and just pushing himself to the limit and maybe follows up Ulfric and gets a couple more blows in and managing to maneuver him his way past. And then there's that last moment of crossing the threshold to the chapel where you're not sure will he be able to step into it or not, but he is able to push through. Okay, great. Yeah, and uh, David, how do you, in a you know, glorious and virtuous way, overcome this this night? Um, oh, I think I only uh, got because uh, I think I'm on a different suit. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, you're a different suit, yeah. but you match it, so it's. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, my mistake. Um, yeah, no, no worries. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I think um, so. It's unorthodox <laughs> means luck or chance. Yeah, or even uh, I, I kind of um, rush for much like the other sort of go more for for pushing pushing past um, uh, the the guardian rather than than outright defeating them. Um, and I think um, as kind of I, 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 I lash out at them with, with my sword and, and push them back, they swing round with their axe and it um, splits my shield uh, down the middle. Um, and um, uh, as I kind of like, you know, roll forwards into the, into the chapel. Okay. Um, and for your devil's bargain, um, do you have an idea for, for how the, the sin manifests itself or you want me to come up with something? Uh, no, I'm, I'm happy to hear a, uh, a suggestion. Um, there's one here that will probably uh, make more sense given the seed to come. It's no matter what the knight eats or drinks, all they taste is soil and sponge and damp. So like maybe when your shield gets split and you hit the ground, you get a mouthful of you know, whatever slime is covering the, the, the flagstones. And, and that is kind of always with you now. I like it. Okay. Do we want to, um, because that's the end of Canticle 4, do you want to take a quick break before the last one? Yeah, that's Okay. So let's say five. Yeah. That's okay with everyone? Okay. Cool. Yep. Okay. So. Catechal 5, the Green Chapel. <clears throat> um, 
Yeah, I mean, deep within the Green Chapel, it says, uh, the knights come to the court of the Fisher King, uh, the old fisherman you encountered uh, at the bottom of the waterfall, now clad in regalia befitting royalty and attended by shrouded servants. Uh, so I imagine a, a grand feast has been put on here for you all. Um, but, you know, you are the only guests. Uh, there are servants and there is the, the Fisher King. Um, maybe let's... Um, I think I'm most interested right first to to hear from Virgil what it feels like to to step across into this maybe not technically consecrated but still hallowed ground of the of the chapel. I I think there there's the the physical weariness that has has now returned. I've I've pushed myself beyond what I should have twice now. And then add on top of that, this existential spiritual wariness, knowing that in my mind, I, I am only allowed here because it, it most likely ends in my death. And, and again, it's a form of penance. And so the weight of, of that uh, pushing down on me, but you know, this, this was my quest. And so I am a knight and I will uh, tackle it all the same. Um, and for, um, for Sir Elian, I think, you know, you see these, uh, these perfectly uh, tailored garlands of roses on the, on the banqueting tables. Uh, and, and at the Fisher King's side, there is, you know, a, a falcon. Um, you know, obviously to your eye, missing a, f a wing feather. Um, and, and the exact coloration of it uh, must be the one underneath your, your tunic. Um, how does this make you feel like... like uh, no, it, it makes you feel like you should be at home here, like this is where you belong, but somehow it seems almost chosen to to frustrate you. Um, what, what, what do you take from, from the scene in front of you? Yeah, um, I think I think the um, that the, the sort of takeaway yeah, is, is with this that's sort of, particularly with the falcon. Um, it's just a sign that kind of I I already I already had what I wanted back where I came from and sort of coming here it's hasn't really achieved anything it's it's just the same uh, the same here as it was uh, was back home. Um. And for, for Ulfric, um, you know, that sense of self-righteousness um, is like still strong in your heart, but it starts, I think, to crumble a little bit. You see in the center of the banqueting hall, there is a, a, a blazing fire, a pit and a, and a spit, but on that spit is, um, is a lion, you know, the, the same lion as on your coat of arms. You know, slowly being turned um, for 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 your own consumption later on. Um, what what do you do when this realization hits you? I find myself unable to sheath my sword from the fight before because there's nothing to sate the bloodlust of it. And I find I'm, I'm standing there with an unsheathed sword in, in a house of God. And I'm, I'm realizing that if I am not the lion of my house, 
than perhaps I'm the snake. And, and that I have become my inability to sheathe my sword kind of mocks me and makes it clear that I have become that the very thing I rail against the world being corruptible and corrupted. Okay. Um, so I think you, um, while it's happening, I think this, this vision seems absolutely 100% real to, to Ulfric. But as soon as it fades, you realize maybe what's happening, right? And certainly the, the player should be in no, no doubt that this is a vision, right? Um, I think you see uh, Virgil uh, approach the Fisher King and the Fisher King takes out two objects with, with his hands. And one is obviously the, the Holy Grail and the other is a, um, a giant uh, ram's head uh, um, fashioned to be a helmet and you know he he places the the helmet uh the, the this ram's horn uh, over virgil's head and then hands him uh, the grail uh, and, and virgil turns around to the acclamation of of all here you know as the as the righteous winner uh in in this quest uh what, what do you do in that kind of split second or how does that make you feel as you experience the vision uh, before you realize that it is just uh, something messing with your mind? Who are you asking for? Sorry, that's, that's for you, buddy. Ah, okay, sorry. Um, I'm... I think this comes as the realisation that I am corrupted, so I think my first sense is one of one of relief that I haven't been given the grail, that this isn't my test, but then my eyes drift to the ram's head helmet and I realised that I have guided and aided and brought in myself and in others, I've brought the devil here and that as foul and dark as this place is, by our presence, it is made fouler and darker. Um, and for Virgil, I think, uh, you have a, a similar vision uh, that you believe in the moment. Uh, and it is of um, Sir Elian, um, who, you know, uh, I think in a triumphalist uh triumphant fashion which is maybe the kind of thing that has driven you to to oppose his pursuit of his love um you know uh this calls the falcon to his wrist uh, and strides forward to to just pick up the the holy grail from the middle of the banquet table um and drink from it without a second thought you know this is um, obviously his uh, his to claim. Uh, he cannot possibly be unworthy, uh, and he is pure enough to drink from it without any kind of preamble or prayer. Um, how do you how do you react to that vision? I I think I um, just drop what gear I'm holding 
and uh, begin almost to grovel at Elian, asking for just just a drop from the grail. Please just give me some. If you give it to me, then it will show that I am forgiven. And then I'm sorely disappointed when the vision disappears. Um, yeah, and I think, Sir Elian, you see your Virgil um, more pious maybe than you've ever imagined him to be drop to his knees uh, to receive uh, the grail directly from the Fisher King himself, um, who, who pours uh, the, 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 the liquid that is within us um, into Virgil's mouth. And you can kind of almost there and then see the, the illness, the wounds being repaired inside him. Um, uh, and I think, you know, you, you know that that was maybe your last chance to, to claim the grail, to, to see him dead in the name of your love. How do you react to this vision? Um, I think uh, Elian calls out, no, how, how can you do this? He is, he is clearly not worthy. He is marked by the sins he and his family have committed. You, you cannot do this. Um, and then the, the, the visions fall from your eyes all and the Fisher King laughs and claps in another course of, of food and wine. Uh, and I think he approaches uh, Sir Elian and says, please eat, you must eat. These apples are the finest in all the land and the wine from France is wonderful. Uh, I would see you uh, eat and drink and be merry at my table. If you cannot enjoy life, then the grail is surely not yours to claim. Yeah, and I think um, I think Elian will sort of take one of the apples and bite into it and sort of gag um, as it just tastes like a mouthful of soil. Um, he he will do his best to sort of cover it up and and sort of try and and power through, but it's it's obvious that like yeah he he's struggling to um, to to kind of um, you know stomach uh, the 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 food, and I think. Maybe every every time you put down something to try something new, you know, maggots and mold erupt out of the, the food you put down on the table uh, and it slowly spreads over, over everything. Um, the, the Fisher King, you know, bids some, uh, some servants to, to help uh, Sir Virgil um, and they begin, uh, they begin to lead you in a dance, some kind of strange, um, malignant, satanic dance that you're sure you've heard tell of in your dreams of your great grandfather. Um, uh, they want you to join in. You must, um, uh, you must join this dance in order to prove yourself, uh, prove to them that you are no longer bound by your family's misdeeds. I yell at them and at the Fisher King and say, I will not join this dance. You must show me the grail do not mock and torment me with these visions and these false promises. And I think the, the Fisher King laughs at your demands and points down one of the, the alcoves or maybe the, the long nave uh, as, um, at a small shrine and says, there is the, is the Holy Grail. If you can approach it, you can claim it. And I think, you know, the, the whirling dance of the servants obscure your vision. And then the next time you, 
you get a clear side of the uh, that corridor you know the the grail is gone um and i think the 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 fisher king approaches uh sir ulfric uh and says well who of your companions will you kill now you have that blade has not tasted blood recently you must kill someone must you not is that the way your curse works is that the price of your power fidgeting i you can see me trying to resist resist the bloodlust and i'm i'm almost incoherently begging the fisher king to let me leave i know that it's too late for me but i'm i'm all my misgivings about about coming here for the grail are coming are coming to pass and i as I as as I fidget, I I almost I, my my movements become more uncontrolled, and I'm I'm cutting cutting my own hands on on my blade because I can't I can't keep my my hands just on the grip, and it's and I'm I'm I'm. Say, I'm saying, l l l l let me leave. I just need to find find a deer or a squirrel or a bird. I, I, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be my companions. I, I, I'm, I must go, and I, and I'm, I'm trying to turn and leave, but I don't I know whether I'm able to. Yeah, I think he. He grabs at you and says, well, only one of you can claim the grail. Why shouldn't you claim it and sape your sword in the same swoop? So I think it's about time for us to draw cards or play cards. Uh, so um, I played the page of cups for the trial. Okay, so we're all ready. So flip them and let's see. Okay, so we have uh, what the seven of wands, um, the the knight of swords, and the knight of the knight of swords. Yeah, and the knight. Oh, sorry, what, who's the... I don't, I don't recognize the last one. But you played... Looks uh, like the Knight of Wands. Uh, yeah, I think it's the Knight okay. of Wands, yeah. yeah. Yeah, cool. Okay, so uh, we have... Uh, no outright success, but two, you know, success for the cost, if we put it that way. Two that do not match the suit, but meet or exceed the difficulty. Um, maybe let's start with um, the straight failure then. Um, Bodhi, we have a seven of wands. Uh, so that is um, found wanting in the current trial. Uh, describe how you're very nearly vanquished and spared only by the aid of another knight or by the mercy of a foe or by random chance. You have dishonored yourself. I'm... I, given that it's um, close to the end here, can I choose not to be spared? 
Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, it's the it's the last trial, so you can uh, play it however you want. So I wrench myself away from the grip of the Fisher King and run um, unthinkingly um, back towards the entrance. I've, I've realized this is all a huge mistake and I am just trying to get out, but I still cannot sheathe my sword. And there's a root that has grown up, a, a, a root of a gnarled old tree that has grown up through the floor, and I don't notice it and trip on it, and I'm impaled on my own sword and pay and pay the blood price of my own sword. Yeah, that definitely works. <laughs> Uh, okay, and uh, I, I would have usually said, you know, who whoever um, kind of draws the most, the highest value, uh, is probably going to be winning the contest. But you both played knights, so uh, I think maybe you're both kind of co uh, co winners of the of the uh, Holy Grail. Um, at least in a in a limited fashion. Uh, so yeah, why don't you describe? You did not match the suit, but meet or exceed the difficulty. Describe how you're forced to use unorthodox means, rely on luck or chance, or even employ dishonorable tactics to attain victory. Uh, so let's go with um, let's go with Virgil first. Um, hmm. Let's say, so there's this dance happening, right? Um, and, and it's blocking Virgil's way from moving towards the grail. I, I think because he, he does know this dance and he, and it is something from, from his great grandfather's past, he relents and, and does give in and allows that part of his family legacy to take over, but he turns it on them and uses the power generated by this dance to overwhelm uh, this consort and the Fisher King that has been created and uh, is able to then move beyond them, but he has probably, uh, you know, solidified his his family's legacy of uh, um, malignance. So for a for a kind of a, a a partial but not complete success in the trial, does this mean that you do get your hands on the on the grail and, and maybe sup from it, but but don't win it outright, or or, or what do you think? Um, is the, is the victory in this case you you know putting putting the family history to bed or, or or something like that i i think um i think the the victory is yeah well i think the victory is he does get to the grail and his and it will spare his life um but he is now wholly embroiled in in this sort of uh you know altar religion cult magic thing going on um you know that was started in prior so he did not he did not pay penance for his family yeah, yeah. Um, to restore their name okay cool i mean if you dance with the devil you know <laughs> there you go <laughs> Uh, and David, how about uh, Sir Elian? Uh, 
Yeah, so I think um, I think it's a similar sort of thing. I think Sir Elian is able to like lay his hand upon the Grail, and um, at least to himself has has sort of satisfied himself that he has done what was required of him. Uh, the, the 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 issue with that is that the you know. Um, the, the the people back home probably don't, you know, are expecting him to come sort of back brandishing the Grail and and uh, and and returning it to them. Um, so I think it's it's that sort of um, yeah, he he considers himself to have fulfilled his duty um, and done what is required to to um, uh, to sort of gain the um, uh, the heart of his love. But um, society as a whole may still not not sort of um, uh, accept that. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, I think um, a bit of a, a bit of an epilogue is, I... isn't. Oh yeah, go ahead. Oh yeah, I was just going to add a little bit of epilogue for. Um, for Sir Ulfric, if I yeah, if I go could. ahead, yeah, absolutely. As as Sir Ulfric is lying impaled by his own sword, breathing his last, he sees um, in the case of um, uh, in the case of Virgil, he sees with his own eyes. Um, Virgil falling to these dark magics, and in the case of um, Sir Elian, sees sees the the embittered result of of being spurned by um, uh, by his love and. And knows, Ulfric knows at the end that he has aided in bringing about the corruption that he so railed against. Uh, and I think, um, do, do you think it would be a good idea if, you know, they're dead on the, on the kind of lintel uh, on the front door into the green chapel, the the moss slowly overcomes him, and he he rises to take the place of that knight who had blocked his way initially. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, okay, I like cool. that. Yeah. Um, how about a an epilogue uh, for for Virgil? You know, how does how do we see him? You know, a month or a year or however long down the path. Um, you know, I, I, I think that if it's, if it works for, uh, David and Sir Elian, I think perhaps, you know, Vir the rest of Virgil's life is probably more or less spent on the run from Sir Elian, um, being hunted by him. Um, maybe not, you know, I'm sure Sir Elian has other things to do at times, but I think, yeah, I think Virgil more or less becomes a hermit of sorts. Um, f now fully succumb to this dark magic and um, yeah, maybe gains the moniker of, of, you know, the dark knight or something like that. Oh, I didn't mean to go there, but oh well, too late. <laughs> um, yeah, some, some sort of, you know, cursed, cursed and banished, uh, you know, knight that the kids now tell tells about. Who knows? He, he lives in the woods. Be careful or he'll get you. Yeah, no, that's cool. And I think, um, yeah, I think actually Sir Elian is actually not, not a million miles away from that either. Um, I think Sir Elian um, returns, um, uh, returns to his love. And I don't think they're, as I, said, I don't think they're able to be together in like the, um, in the in the the sort of um, eyes of society and all of that. But the the two of them um, elope together, um, 
and yeah, I think uh, you know, to sort of turn to that, I think they kind of, um, you know, um, Elian becomes a sort of um, um, uh, cell sword, um, and and they sort of roam around the countryside. But yeah, he's always kind of for Virgil. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think that's a, it's a suitably somber place to wrap for a game rooted in trophy. Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll stop recording and we can do a quick debrief. Thanks for, thanks for watching.